What's going on, you guys? This is Joey of Joey Central here, and welcome to the new and improved C++ programming tutorial. Um, so as you can see right here, this is going to be a more interactive-based uh, tutorial series. Now, if you are new to programming and you have never created a program before, this is the place for you. This is going to be an interactive programming tutorial series where you get to follow along with everything that I will be doing and uh, basically I will be explaining every step along the way so there's gonna be no mystery no anything because I will demystify everything I will make this as simple as possible this will be very very structured which is much different from my last programming tutorial series uh, so Without further ado, let us get started. Um, before we get into the coding first, I'm going to explain a little bit of what a computer program is. So a computer program is just simply um, something that consists of a series of line of code and basically each line of code is being executed by the processor uh, one step at a time. Now there are three basic type of instructions. There are and there's the input, process, and output. There's more type of instructions, but these are the main three uh, instruction types that we're going to be dealing with. Um, so uh, we're going to be dealing a lot with this uh, very soon. But a variable is just simply a name for an object that happens to be in memory that stores some type of data. Um, so when we create a program, we want to implement algorithmic thinking. So when we're creating a program, we want to implement algorithmic thinking. And what algorithmic thinking is, is a concept of creating a sequence of instructions to solving a problem. Um, so basically, uh, what that means is you kind of want to explain to the computer how you want to perform a task and get it done and that requires creating very specific steps in order to getting something done. Um, humans are very interpretive. We're not as literal as computers, so if you were to tell somebody, just make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, the other person would be like, okay, I know how to do that. Just get the bread, uh, get the jelly and the uh, peanut butter and uh, put, put the two pieces of bread together and have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You would have to go explain every step along the way on how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich if you are going to be making a computer program because computers are not very smart and you have to tell them exactly how to do something. Um, an algorithm is just simply a series of instructions that tells a program how to perform a task. Um, so to create a C++ program, you're gonna need a integrated development environment or an IDE. Uh, and there are two uh, IDEs that I would highly recommend depending on which operating system you are using. If you are using Windows, then I would highly suggest using Visual Studio. And if you're using a Mac, then I would highly suggest Xcode. If you're using Linux, then uh, you should already have Emacs available, and then you'd have to use something like uh, G++ in order to uh, compile it. Uh, I do have information on that in my old programming tutorial. Uh, I have a particular video where I actually make a project in uh, Visual Studio and also steps on how to download it as well. So uh, if, you, if you need help, uh, you, you, you're more than welcome to refer to that video. Um, but otherwise, I'm gonna have all the uh, in, in link installations uh, in the description down below in this video. Um, okay, so um, after you download the IDE, if you're using Xcode, um, then you should kind of get a screen like this. Um, so, down uh, to the right, you have like all a list of your recent projects, um, but you're probably not gonna have anything because if it's your first uh, program uh, or the first time you ever installed it, and you never programmed before, so it's gonna be blank for you. Um, so you'll see three options. You're gonna hit, want to hit the second one, create a new Xcode project, and this is very similar to Visual Studio. Create a new project, and once you hit that option you should see a screen like this. Um, so you're gonna wanna hit command line tool. That's what we're gonna be dealing with here. And then finally, 
you're going to want to name your project something. You can call it test. You can call it hello world. You can call it whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, but make sure you have C++ selected as your language before you hitting next. And after you hit next, you'll be able to save your project to any folder you want. And it doesn't matter where it is, so as long as you're able to identify it, its location for later usage. And then you just save it, and then you should have your, um, your project available. Okay, so now we are going to be creating our very first hello world program so if you're not or if you haven't already noticed uh, the right window this is where the coding is going to occur so make if you have your IDE installed um, then make sure you're following along if you don't have your project created then I highly suggest pausing the video right now until you actually create your project and then after that hit play and follow along okay so I'm assuming that you guys are have your project open and uh, all set and ready to go. So here is my project that I have right now. Um, this is what your um, what your screen should look like. You'll notice that you have um, a library, um, IO Stream. If if you're using Xcode, you should already have that. If you're using Visual Studio, you may or may not. If you don't have it, make sure you do that. It should be uh, pound include space and then a left arrow io stream and then close it with the right arrow that's pretty much how it uh how it works um and then of course you should have uh this line right here using namespace standard um if you don't make sure you include it but i'm pretty sure if you're using the two ides i mentioned then uh you should already have that and then you should have your main as well now if you're using uh um xcode you should have something uh, you might have two parameters inside your main uh, your main function. I think it's going to be int argc char argv. Um, or it should be. I think it's const char argv. So this is what, uh, if you're using Xcode, this is kind of what the parameters look like. It really doesn't matter if you have them or not because it's going to be irrelevant uh, for now. So... Um, whatever you're using don't matter just uh, as long as you have a main function uh, which is where every all, everything in the project uh, executes then you should be all good so um, a couple things I'm gonna mention uh, all the functionality inside of a program is inside of the main function and usually when a, when, a, when the main program runs successfully it has a return code of zero hence the return zero. Uh, that means the program has executed successfully. Um, so now we're going to uh, add a little bit of functionality to this. What we're going to do is we're going to print some text to the screen. So to do that we are going to type the keyword cout and then we're going to use two um, left arrows. This is called the extraction operator. Um, and then inside of quotation marks, we're going to add hello world. And now we add the extraction operator again, and we're going to add it in the, uh, the word end L. Um, and then we make sure we close it off with a semicolon. Usually in C++, whenever you write lines of code, it usually ends with a semicolon. There are some exceptions to this, and I'll show you um, all of that later. But for now, about every single line of code you write is going to end with a semicolon. So when you compile it and run uh, the project, what you're going to see is the text hello world if you are using Xcode. If you are using Visual Studio, however, the program will, ex will exit before you get the chance to see anything. So to prevent that from happening, um, you want to hit right before uh, the line that says return zero. So for me, it would be a uh, line seven. Um, you're gonna hit the uh, uh, the breakpoint, and what a breakpoint is, it's a, it's a debugging tool that helps you kind of like debug um, your program. I'll go into debugging a little later, but right now, you're gonna hit this uh, um, the um, this line right here, and 
if you hit if it if it works you should see like a circle around it um, and what that means is that you have inserted a breakpoint so basically your program is going to like pause a little bit you'll be able to see the text that you have it should say hello world and right before you continue the program which will then it'll just uh, exit with uh, exit code one so um, that's the basic uh, that's the basics of it now there are some things I want to mention first of all um, C++ disregards white space so it doesn't matter if we write our code with uh, like this or if we get rid of the spaces um, this is perfectly acceptable however it looks very ugly it has very little readability and we don't want this so we're going to add spaces in between the operators usually because this will help improve readability now I will be talking about um, some uh, soft rules that we're going to be discussing later on which is kind of uh, which kind of helps with code readability which is very important especially later on if you're going to be working in industry with many other people it's very important to make sure you have code um, lines of code as readable as possible and also what you can also do as well is you can add comments um, so this is a single line comment is a single line comment now what this is is it will not be executed by the program at all it will ignore this comment um, now this is very useful if you want to let the user um, yourself or somebody else editing your program know what a line of code is doing so if we want to add a comment letting people know this is going to print hello world we just add a, um, two uh, slashes and, we, and we're going to say um, writes hello world to screen the, the uh, compiler will completely ignore this this is just to help people who are looking at your code know like what's going on now of course it's kind of trivial right now but when you start doing advanced programs it's gonna help a lot and uh, there's also a multi-line comment as well if you want to do that, you're going to do a slash and an asterisk. And then, uh, as you can see, everything down below kind of like goes blank. So you want to make sure you end it, uh, the multi-line comment, with with an with asterisk slash. And everything here is going to be commented out. So if, you're, if you have like uh, multiple lines of comments that you want to write, then that will be pretty helpful. Otherwise, you're mostly just going to be using a single line comment. Um, so yeah, this will be useful to know for uh, later usage. But yeah, um, as far as uh, functionality is concerned, this is pretty much our very first C++ pr uh, program that we have written. Um, so I'm going to uh, finish this off with... Uh, some information uh, and first I'm going to talk about some incentives like why even bother with programming in the first place and uh, we can check out uh, glass doors so according to glass doors um, they have an article called 50 best jobs in America in 2019 uh, you can already see data scientists right up top that is a, uh, a profession that in involves computer programming and uh, yeah, so uh, if we keep going down, you have data engineer, software engineer, um, mechanical engineers. Some some of them do require uh, programming, like MATLAB, for an example, which is a uh, a, a mathematical simulation tool. Um, because simulations are pretty important when it comes to uh, designing blueprints. Um, you have sales engineers, um, operations managers. Uh, cybersecurity engineer, Java developer, even electrical engineers have to deal with uh, programming for the most part. Um, so systems engineers. So as you can see, just from this fifty, uh, um, from the list of fifty top jobs in America alone, we we already have at least uh, a dozen jobs here that uh, requires programming. And uh, in addition to. Uh, um, to like the top jobs that require programming 
um, a lot of fields in big data, like artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, um, cybersecurity, um, cryptography. These are all big data fields that are growing rapidly. And there's going to be a lot of jobs that before didn't require programming that may actually require programming in the near future. So staying on top of things will definitely help you a lot in your future career aspects. And now finally, I'm going to discuss um, some uh, under the hood information about um, like what's going on under the hood during a computer program essentially. So um, what we were dealing with before was high level design, but what's going on under the hood is that computers have a bunch of switch um, switches called bytes which holds uh, two values. They either hold a one or they hold a zero. And they're constantly switching um, all the time. Um, so to execute a series of instructions, uh, the processor actually reads each line of instructions or calculations rather. And it basically uh, executes each of them line by line. Now, of course, a processor can't execute every single instruction all at once, so the rest of the instructions are going to need some place to be stored uh, to be read later on. And that's where the memory comes into place. The memory is what stores millions upon millions of memory addresses. Um, and within these memory addresses is where the uh, instructions are located at. Now, there is a... Um, um, a resource if you're really interested in about uh, um, computer organization and architecture it's a uh, it's a textbook on Amazon it's a uh, very uh, it's very useful to know um, or it can be useful depending on how far in the field you want to get into um, I actually got this uh, textbook um, for one of my courses at uh, academics and uh, it was pretty hard. It's pretty hard to un understand if you don't have any kind of hardware experience, but it can become very helpful and it can help you uh, think about computers and programming in a completely different way. So if you're interested, then uh, you can check that out down below. Um, but anyways, uh, and then in my next programming tutorial video, we're going to be discussing uh, variables, and we're going to go into great details on this, and I'm going to tell you guys everything you need to know, to know about it. Um, it's going to be very helpful, and it's going to be a very crucial tutorial, uh, especially for later videos. Uh, if you found this uh, to be very helpful and you want to see more, do hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Until then, this is Joey at Joey Central signing out, and as always, stay in the central.